Ruth is a gorgeous book. In just four chapters it tells a beautiful story that appeals, as they say, to young and old alike. The story concerns a family and marriage and the birth of a baby. The most natural and everyday things in the world. And yet the story grips us from beginning to end with no conflict, no fighting, no struggles. It's a beautiful book. And the story is beautifully told. As I hope I'll begin to hint to you in this introduction. Of course I'd love to do more than just the one introduction. And you'll find I've got a, a few videos on Ruth if you want to watch them. But now let's introduce the book of Ruth. The best story ever told? Perhaps not, but certainly one of the best told stories ever. In Christian Bibles, the book of Ruth follows immediately after Judges and precedes 1 Samuel. It's an oddity because in Jewish Bibles it's in a completely different section, along with Proverbs and Ecclesiastes and Esther and various other things, including Psalms. I want to talk about the placing of Ruth in the Christian Bible because it does follow immediately after Judges, that horrible book, large parts of which get thoroughly censored in churches and in most Bible reading programs too. If you want to see a different take on Judges, listen to my twisted tales or should the book of Judges be censored. That one got me into trouble with a fundamentalist who couldn't be bothered to actually listen to what I was saying before condemning me to hell, so it may be worth listening to. To an Old Testament teacher who's used to thinking of Ruth with the other writings, instead of with Judges, it's interesting to hear Ruth in this context. You see, one of the strong themes in the book of Ruth is redemption. The story is about the need for a baby to continue the house of Elimelech, and therefore of a redeemer to provide for the two widows and to father the baby. And it's about the primary virtue of the Old Testament and the primary virtue required of redeemers chesed, the Hebrew word it means faithfulness, love, kindness in a covenant context and it's not just the primary virtue required of humans in the Old Testament it's also one of the primary virtues shown by God and it's key to the role of the redeemer the male relative who has responsibility for protecting and caring for the weak and vulnerable of the family. The book of Ruth in the Christian Bible, situated between Judges and Samuel, redeems. It echoes the ancestral stories of failure. Think of the reference to the wives, plural of Jacob, and to the story of Judah and Tamar, where the patriarch fails and the foreign woman is faithful. It echoes those stories and redeems them. Here both the foreign woman and the ancestor show chesed. It announces and prefigures David. Did you notice how the book ends with two genealogies of David? Not one, but two. Now did you remember the story of David and a foreign woman? Yes. David, Bathsheba, and poor old Uriah. And notice how Jesus' genealogy in Matthew, there are very few women, but two of them are Ruth and Bathsheba. The book announces and prefigures David, but it redeems him. It doesn't just redeem his Moabite ancestry by showing that his Moabite ancestress was a wonderful person but it also shows what David could and should have been a man of chesed and the book stands between the terror and chaos of judges and the fumbling beginnings of an ultimately failing royal system in Samuel and presents a world where God's virtue is revealed precisely in his creatures' lives. It's an everyday tale of country folk, but boy is it crammed with theology, reminding us what God is like, and encouraging us to grow like God, as 
Ruth and Boaz do. And incidentally, these four chapters are a crackingly well-told tale. There's no violence, no death, no hatred or conflict, but the story keeps our interest all the way through. It is one of the best told stories ever. So if you haven't listened to it or read it carefully yet, enjoy. If you have, enjoy again. <laughs>